What's going on guys, Patrick's here. So today we're going to explore how to complete this gear motor bracket, the steps that you're going to take. It's very similar to a previous assignment that we had. Uh, that was the simple bracket. So we are going to put this together. I'm going to show you step by step how to approach this based on what drawing you see here and kind of some little tricks that we can do to figure out what these different measurements are. So to start, we're just going to create a new document. So I'm going to, since I already made this before, I'm going to just simply type in gear motor, but normally we would do first initial, last name, gear motor. So from here, we're going to decide how we are going to approach creating this actual drawing in the first place. So uh, what we're going to look at is what is the simplest thing or simplest piece in order to construct and then build upon the details for that afterwards. So for here, if I look at through this entire thing, the easiest thing that I can create right off the bat is this top view. So it's this L shape that we have going on here. So I'm going to create this L shape because from here, I can actually get access to both of these faces and create my details from there instead of just trying to build each bit piece by piece and connecting it together. It's a lot easier to remove material than it is to add in material. So from here, I'm going to click sketch and select the top view. So now that I'm in the top view, I can start creating my actual sketch from here. And I'm just going to create my simple L shape around. So starting from the middle, I'm going to assume that this corner right here, the inside corner, is going to be my starting location. So I'm going to go up 20. Uh, so in this case, actually, before I continue, let me change my units over, something very important to do. This drawing is actually both in, you have millimeters and inches, but it's a lot easier and accurate to utilize millimeters since they are more exact numbers. And it'll be easier to do some quick math as well as build out the entire thing via millimeters instead. So we're gonna enter back in the sketch. And now that I make these adjustments, we're gonna go to 20. Here's my height, you can see that right here. My width here, these are our universal widths all the way around. So this is, while this is 1.5, this is also gonna be 1.5. That's a very common place amongst like machining parts. You wanna keep the, the metal sheet consistent. So that way we can take these parts, the machine can actually take out the whole sheet of metal, carve out each piece and weld it together. We're gonna go all the way down to 21.5. Now where I'm getting 21.5 from is that I take 20 plus the 0.5 thickness that's over here and add it together. We're going to go over 41.5 using that same logic. The thickness plus that full length. Go up 0.5 or 1.5 and then finally finish it off by going back to the origin. And that creates my full plate. I'm going to do some cleaning up for some maintenance here for all my dimensions. Just so if I ever need to open this back up. I can actually see the inside dimensions and it's nice and clean. So we can see every aspect of the drawing. Okay, so that gives me my L-shaped plate. From here, we can complete the sketch and actually extrude our piece. So I'm going to do an extrusion, click, and the distance here, we can look through our drawing to try to find the thickness of it. The thickness that I see here is this full length up and down this 20. So we're going to give it 20 millimeters. Hit the check. Okay. So from here, we have our L shape. There are two faces that we're going to create, this face right here, as well as this face, this entirety. So we're going to do the smaller face first, so that's right here, and then we'll transition to the larger face and some tips and tricks that go in with that. So we're going to click Sketch here and select this face. I'm going to rotate it to the right side so I can do my carving out, just so it matches up with the actual shape here and it'll be really easy to create my dimensions from here so my curve is going to be on this side and all of my circles this is my bottom piece right here it's going to be on this side as well so it makes it a lot easier for us to do our construction okay so the first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to create a cross section in the center so this entire shape is perfectly even on both sides for the center of the circle so we're going to go from here down to here and then create a nice cross section for us same for the top and the base. So by doing this, 
we actually get a nice center point for our circle. So that way when I create my circle here, I can now just simply type in 7.5 and I know this is in the center of the plate. So that is our perfect circle in the middle. From here, I'm going to try to figure out where one of these circles is located. That way making it a lot easier for me to construct from here. So we know that this is 15, meaning that these circles are spaced out 7.5 from the center of our square. Knowing that it's halfway through the middle because that's the center, they share the same center point. So we can make a circle in any direction, 7.5. And using that as a point, we're going to make a circle with a diameter of 2.9 from our drawing right here. So you can see the 2.9 right there. I'm going to turn this into a construction line, as well as these cross sections. So all three of these are construction lines. Good to go there. The next thing we're going to have to create is a pattern all the way around. So there are a couple ways that we can do this, but the easiest way is to actually make the extrusion first. So with that being said, that means we're done this sketch for right now. We're going to do an, a simple extrusion, click remove. It doesn't matter what the blind or what the dimension is, so we can just use the blind and just cut all the way through both of these and hit the check mark. So you can see we have these holes here. From here, we're going to search out the tool at the top. It's actually normally like this, a linear pattern. We're actually going to use a circular pattern. A couple settings we have to change before we can create our circular pattern all the way around in this perfect circle is we have to edit to be a feature pattern. We have to select the axis, which is here, and the feature. So the feature is going to be this circle. By doing that, we actually create our full extrusion all the way around the outside. Didn't work. Hold on. I think I select face instead of feature. So select face instead. Rotate it all the way around. Hmm. Yep. Feature pattern, good. Extrusion 2. We're not going to do the edge. We're just going to do. Oh, yeah, I am going to do the edge. Okay, go space. Oh, apply per instance. There we go, forgot a setting. So we just have to check apply per instance. And from there, that creates our actual figure. So we can use the circular pattern just like that. Just make sure to check apply for instance. And then we're good to go. So from here, we are going to finish it off by creating this curve. Now I'm going to create fillets from each side of here, from the top from here, and this is going to be 10 millimeters. Now where I'm getting this 10 from is that I know this circle here is perfectly even from this edge going all the way wrapping around. So since it starts from the center, and that's when it starts to curve out, I can assume that it's going to be all the way from the edge to here. Knowing that this is 20, up to the edge means that if I want this to curve from the center all the way up to the next edge, I have to make it 10. So I have to go halfway through and that creates our curvature. Same on the bottom half and that creates our perfect curve. So this cuts out the edge and we're done with that piece. Cool. Perfect. Okay. So the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to create a, this jigsaw style pattern on the bottom section. So in order to do that, we are going to select our view from here. We're going to go to the back. And just to make sure that it matches up with our view here, I'm going to flip this over to the other side. So that way you can see that we have this top section and then we have our section down here, just so it all matches up when we go to do our cuts. Before I begin actually doing our setup, I'm going to project this curve right here. So that way I have access to lines within this curve. Same for this bottom section. Just in case I want to use it, it's just something to help us keep it very consistent and allows us to have access to certain things like midpoint lines. I'm going to select my line tool and I'm going to try to figure out where this is located. 
So from the edge, see we have 15.9 is from the center of here to the center of here, meaning that this cuts right through the middle of that section. So if it's 15.9 here, half of 15.9 is 7.95. Yes. So since it's 7.95 going up, we're going to create a line, type in 7.95. And then we are going to, from this point, move over 9.5. The reason I select 9.5 is that you can clearly see from here, the edge to the center of the circle is 9.5. So we are going to create a circle from that point. We can continue this pattern as well, going over 6.4 each. So let me show you that. There's actually some alternative things we can do as well, so let's create the circle first. You can either manually hand create these all individually, which I did during the first attempt of this drawing, but there are some quick things that you can do to make it a lot easier. So now the length of the circle, as you can see right here, has a radius of 1.6. Knowing that the default is a diameter, I'm just going to double that to make sure that I make the diameter of the circle and not the radius. So we just have to simply double that to 3.2, and that's good to go. From here, I'm going to do one last step before I do my replication. We're going to create some lines going straight off. Right here. Ooh, that was a bad click. Oh, geez. There we go. Let me add a dot just to make this consistent. There we go. So we had a point there, and we're just going to go straight up. There we go. Okay. I'm going to trim this out real quick. Oh, it deleted. Oh, because I had to bring it to geometry. There we go. We can just leave that. That's fine. It'll still trim out either way. So, okay, get rid of this section here and here. So now we have our circle cut out right here. I'm actually going to return that last one just so we have the dimension correct and change that to construction. There we go. From here, we can actually utilize this pattern tool up at the top here, this linear pattern, in order to create just our entire section here all the way across and equally spaced. So instead of us having to do extra work and creating them individually, we can actually just utilize the pattern tool. So I'm going to click linear pattern. I am going to select the pattern that I'm going to follow along with, which is all these pieces. And notice that it stretches it out to over here. So there's a couple settings that we need to keep in mind when utilizing the pattern tool. One is this directional arrow. This controls which way that the actual pattern is going to travel in. The next is the length. So we can actually change out this length to be whatever we want it to be. In this case, I'm going to double click on it. Right now it's negative because it's going the opposite direction. We want to maintain that negative and type in 6.4. The last one is the amount. So if you can see here, it's counting the initial one as well. So it gets three times. So we have one, two, three, four, five divots. So I'm going to double click this number and change it to five. Okay. So we have all of our patterns. We're good to go there. We click off so we have them all replicated. And now these are perfectly spaced even patterns. We know these are each 6.4 piece. Oh, 6.4 center to center. So. Oh, that actually works out. That's fine. So since I started from this edge and went to the next one, you can see that instead of center to center, it's still 6.4. As long as the spacing is equal, we're totally fine with that. But this is 6.4 center to center. Since the gap would be the same to line it up center to center, this is perfectly fine. I had a little panic attack for a second. OK. So we are going to do a similar thing to create these circles at the bottom section here. And then we can do a simple mirror of these top sections to the bottom section and finish our pattern from there. So let's quickly go through where this is located. Now that we marked off the 7.5, I know that it's all the way across here. And from it's from the edge to the center of the first circle is 6.4. So let's do that just like we did the top section here. So we're going to do 6.4. And create our circle. This circle has a same dimension as our top section, so it would be 3.2 in diameter. I'm going to turn this into a construction line. 
and then we're going to create our linear pattern. So same idea as before, linear pattern, select the object, make sure we're going in the right direction, change our thing to 6.4, which you can see from space to space, it's located right here, it's 6.4. Changing it in the other direction, I forgot to put a negative in. Negative 6.4, remember your starting direction is very important, so make sure that you're maintaining that distance. Now this one is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, so we're going to type in 6, and we have a 6 circle pattern all the way across. We click after that, and we're good. That creates our circular pattern there. Now with these lines in play now, what we can do is we can mirror these top pattern sections, first by selecting this mirror line, and then selecting our pattern all the way around. So no need for crazy replication, we just click on the pieces. Okay, and that creates our shape. Hit escape, and there you go. There's our pattern set up. Check the sketches off, and we can start our extrusions. Click remove, doesn't matter the length, and we're just going to remove all these bottom sections, remove the center circles. Okay, hit the check, and voila, you have this entire pattern. So again, really straightforward there. We have one last step to complete, and this, this plate is completely finished. So, a couple things worth noting is this section here. So we know from here to the edge is 6.6, .6, and we know from here is 1.6 in radius, so that means from here to here is 1.6. So we have some leftover area that we have to account for, and we're gonna create a radius based on that curvature. So knowing then from here to here is five, we are going to create a radius that reflects that and is able to carve out our section. So for those of you that I did message on there on Remind, uh, we used a radius of 5.6. You can realistically get as close as possible if you want to. These are just a little safety things. So we're just going to carve out assuming 5.6. And that was a chamfer and I clicked the wrong one. So we're going to do a fillet of 5.6. There you go. Yeah, and see that takes us right to the edge, and same for here as well. Realistically, something a little bit smaller could also work just as well, but this gives us an ideal section for us to cut out of. Next is the uh, the curves down here. These are a just a shaving curve to get rid of the corners so that no one gets nicked or cut. So we're going to use a very simple 0.2 millimeters to reflect that curve. That was the wrong one. We're going to deselect that. And we're just doing the insides here. Just getting all these edges. Nice safety area. This also allows for very easy slotting. We're trying to line up brackets. You don't want them carving against each other. And again, up to 0.5 is typically acceptable for these but we're just gonna standardize it at a 0.2 just to make sure that we're all set and good to go. One last thing that I want to iron out is one last fillet just for a nice machined look. Now normally this curve doesn't actually matter, but I'm going to do a nice welding curve of 0.5 millimeters just so we can have this attached. And it's the same thing on the edge here. We're going to do a different fillet. Down here, we know that this curve right here is 1.5 because it's based on the thickness. So I'm going to do it right here is 1.5 millimeters and carve it out that section. There you go. Okay. So with all these fillets completed, we are good to go. We have our entire setup and that creates our motor. So for those of you that haven't gotten the chance to share it with me, if you're part of my class, feel free to do so on Onshape with the email that's provided. And if you're not part of that, if you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment on this video. Or if you are a part of my classes, feel free to shoot me a remind message or post a comment on Google Classroom underneath the assignment. 
and I will get back to you as soon as possible. I hope this tutorial helped you getting through this particular assignment. I know there's some difficult things to it, but if you utilize some of the creative tools that Onshape has to offer you, such as the pattern tools, then it actually does simplify the whole process. Again, I hope you guys have a fantastic day, and I hope this wasn't too difficult on you. Thanks, and have a wonderful day.